60 seconds. Get the microphone down here. Hello everyone! Welcome back for more. Let's play You Don't Know Jack Mach 2. One player. Thank you. The game is played as follows. You are familiar with proper gameplay. Superb. The game will begin. Directly. Let's get going. One. Coming at you. Exotic birds that don't crap on your car hood. You get this one, you pocket 2,000 bucks. Okay, the kitsch episode. Here's how it'll work. Kitch. I'll mention a bunch of tacky stuff, and you act like you've never heard of that stuff. Uh-huh, sure. As long as we got that straight from the get-go, let's get to it. Chachkeys. Consider where pink flamingos are indigenous to, on which of these shows would you probably not see an actual pink flamingo trying to mate with a plastic pink flamingo? When Africa's animals attack, South America's funniest animals, Australia's funniest home videos, or Asia's craziest pets? Hmm. I don't think they're indigenous to Australia, are they? Flamingos are not indigenous to Australia. Nah. Over there, they fill up entire hour-long shows with kangaroos punching men in the kahuganas. And then there's the outback. Next, Judas ate at Sizzler. You get it right, you get 2K. Heads up, here it comes. Sizzler. Suppose Jesus decided to open a theme restaurant called TGI Gods. Based on events from Jesus' life, which of these would the restaurant not feature? A water for wine coupon deal, a Thursday night last supper special, an all-you-can-eat loaves and fishes buffet, or complimentary salad and manna from heaven. I don't think he ever handed out manna from heaven. Looking for complimentary manna from heaven, you're gonna have to go down the street to PJO Moses. Mm -hmm. Yep, at Moses' restaurant, it's all you can eat breadsticks from heaven. The bad news is you gotta kill a lamb and smear its blood all over your table, or else the waiter kills your eldest son. That and you can't hang on to it. It goes bad overnight. Here's a little something I call tacky souvenir diseases. Let's see what you'll do for a thousand bucks. Hey, you know those t-shirts that say, my parents went to wherever, and all I got was this lousy t-shirt? <laughs> yeah, I've got a couple oh, of those. See if you can finish this one. My parents went to blank, and all I got was the lousy Ebola virus. So how about it? Where'd they go? Zaire, Bangladesh, Costa Rica, or Australia? Hmm, that's a good question. My close personal friend, the Ebola virus, was first discovered by humans in Zaire back in 76. And lucky for us, it's been popping up here and there ever since. <laughs> the disease is passed on when people clean out their closets and bring all their diseased monkeys to the thrift store for some other poor sap to buy. That's why I always say be sure to wash your diseased monkeys before wearing them. Or just don't wear them. That, that would work. The category is... The hypoallergenic Chia Pet. 1,000 bucks if you get it. You know how Chia Pets have branched out, so now there's a Chia Head and a Chia Puppy and a tree and a family and... The Here's Chia the Chia. If you were an idiot, which of these Chia Cats would you think was defective because it wasn't growing any hair? Chia Sphinx, Chia Manx, Chia Burmese, or Chia Rex? I'm pretty sure the Manx is the hairless. No, unlike the Chia Pet with oh, the bad age ah, hairdo, the stupid. Chia Manx would be a Me. Chia Pet without a tail. Yes. I could have given you Darn some it. cash if you picked this one. Your Sphinx is uh. basically a hairless cat, so it's not going to grow much hair slash greenery. But never despair, you might win a spot on the new Egypt's Most Ridiculous House Plants show. Well, it's oh, not like it's these have been high-value questions yet. This or that. I like to call this Dizzardat, there's a two-headed sucker born every minute. Okay, I'm about to keep, rattle keep off second Barnum game. Hey, Howard fine, I'm ready if you Stern. are. Give me 30 seconds okay. on the clock. The missing link, PT Barnum or Hop Elephant Boy. Jojo, the dog face boy. Hank, the angry dwarf. Hmm. Jang and Ang. Really? So you got five right. How's it feel to be just about average? Let's see your new score. And now back to our regularly scheduled program. Six. This category is I want the Tickle Me Chester A. Arthur doll. How does $2,000 sound? I don't. Let's see how you handle this one. 
Suppose you can't find any Garfield window suction toys, so you settle for a James Garfield toy instead. Considering Garfield's presidency, which of these will most likely happen? It'll be impeached and thrown out. It'll lose both legs in a car accident. It'll be replaced with a James Polk doll. Or it'll fall off after less than a year. I don't remember. Oh, what did that uh, Garfield? Does this ring a bell? Jim Garfield was shot just four months into his presidency. So be sure to get yourself one of those hilarious signs yeah, that reads right. assassinated president hmm. on board. Seven. The category is going to be fun with radiation. 2,000 bucks for a correct answer. Well, speaking of high culture. How about that George Hamilton and his eternal quest for the perfect tan? Suppose you buy a Where in the World is George Hamilton coloring book. Which of these is an actual Crayola crayon that you could use to approximate George's rich tan? Snazzy Jazzy Sienna, Hunky Funky Hazel, Fuzzy Wuzzy Brown, or Hippy Dippy Chestnut? Pretty sure Sienna is the right color of brown. I'm sorry, but Snazzy Jazzy Sienna is not a Crayola crayon. It's a WNBA team. I think. Hey, if you got a minute, take a look at this. Yep, Fuzzy Wuzzy Brown is an actual Crayola color. Hmm. Nice to know you're keeping up on these things. So yeah, sure, you could describe George as brown, probably even Wuzzy, but definitely not Fuzzy. I mean, hair can't grow with that much radiation. Eight. Oh, that's I'm how I completely misread the question. T-shirt equals sex machine. I got two thousand no, dollars. You don't know this one. Okay, be honest. Who remembers when bolo ties were all the rage? Well, given a bolo tie, you try to tie a plain old bolo around your neck. What will happen? You'll slice off your head. You'll be covered in fruit juice. You'll be clawed by a monkey, or you'll be strangled by a clown. Bolo? Well? A bolo is a single-edged machete. Yeah. And if you prefer something with less hassle, feel free to use a clip-on bolo. She'll never know the difference. Until you slice off her head. Nine. This you one's called... Go in for the kiss. On, damn it! And this one's gonna be worth $2,000. Flex those fingers, here it comes. Suppose that when you clap to activate your clapper, you instead get the same result sumo wrestlers get when they clap before a match. Who will you clap on? Your spouse, your god, your enemies, or the Japanese emperor? Hmm. Do you ever recognize patterns in your life? Okay, now here's a good answer. Before each match, the wrestlers perform a ceremony in which they clap to wake up the gods. Unfortunately, all the applauding during the match usually sends the gods into narcoleptic fits. Ten. Coming at you. My eye rock rocks. You're looking at $3,000 on this one. Put your head between your knees because we're going down. Suppose you're speeding in your Chevy IROC and you get into an accident. What are the chances that your fuzzy dice will come up as double sixes at the accident site? About 3 in 100, about 10 in 100, about 15 in 100, or about 21 in 100? It's about 3 in 100. Well, my bookie tells me there's a 2.78% chance of rolling double sixes. And those are some pretty steep odds. Although, if you're driving an IROC, I'm sure you're no stranger to getting lucky in your car, huh? Yeah. Loser. No. You're probably Okay, get really your helmets not. on. This one's a coinkydink. dink Listen up. This is how we're going to work this one. You're going to see a bunch of... Like the buzzer. Hair. Fine, fine. Okay, that's fine. Far be it for me to delay you. I like to call this coinkydink. dink Bad taste and tastes bad. All right, let's dive in. A dog does this to cool off, and guys wear them to cover up. What have they got in common? Catch fish with it and hang curtains on it. Oh. Okay, let's see if I get Rod back. Rod and Pants. And to show yourself naked. What X 
Marks, and Dick and Jane's dog. Broad Flash Spot. Swanky Apartment and Feminine Hygiene Product. A pad, but... Time for the bonus fun. What do all of the correct answers have in common? Are they all things that are best hot? Fruit and dog breeds. They are, aren't they? Asian food. Types of chia pets. Goofy Crayola colors. U.S. tourist traps. Goofy Crayola colors. Things that are best hot. You got it. You're on fire. Perfect. Now see if you can top it off with a bonus. Hey, player one, you got the bonus too. I'd pat you on the back, but I don't want to catch anything. Let's move on. I've said my joke to that before. Up next, put a little bounce in your head. You get it right, I'm putting you up $2,000. Hey, have you ever seen those dolls with the nodding heads? They just keep nodding their heads up and down. Yes, yes, yes. No matter what happens, they just keep nodding yes. Which of these nodding head dolls would answer correctly when asked, Were you involved with the Watergate scandal? A Janet Reno doll, a Clarence Thomas doll, a Hale Ehrlich doll, or a John Dean doll? Man. Oh. Hmm. I think Thomas was. No, a Clarence Thomas doll only responds to questions about pubic hair and coke. <laughs> what do you say we check out the right answer? My close personal friend John Dean was Nixon's advisor and resigned during the Watergate scandal. Then again, the doll would say yes if you asked it if you could set it on fire and drop it from an eight-story building. So, you know, you have to take what it says with a grain of salt. Indeed you do. Here's a little something I call, oh boy, a blowout. We're playing for $3,000 this time. Think fast, it's question time. Getting hit by a deploying automobile airbag is roughly equivalent to getting smacked by which of the following? A beanbag chair going 30 miles per hour, molded jello going 55 miles per hour, a whoopee cushion going 200 miles per hour, or a blow-up doll going 600 miles per hour. It's moving pretty quick. Ow! Standard deployment of an automobile airbag is about 200 miles per hour. And to pry you out of the wrecked car, they usually use those chattering teeth. And then when that doesn't work, they get the jaws of life. Category is, his stage name was Stand Up Bull. You get this one, you pocket 2,000 bucks. Open wide. When would most likely have been the first time that Sitting Bull tried out the hilarious Arrow Through the Head comedy bit? Dollar Drink Night at the Cherokee Zanies, Amateur Night at the Sioux Funny Bones, Open Mic Night at the Apache Giggles, or Ladies Night at the Comanche Chuckles? Yeah. Besides being an absolute card, my close personal friend Sitting Bull was one of the leaders of the Sioux. How, oh, ladies and germs, take my squaw. Please, is this talkie stick on? How? How? <sighs> Insert joke about, about to, bad oh, stand up well, at the casinos before. here. Let's see how much you've learned. Here's your Without clue. me butchering the line. Putting the wacky in wacky neighbor. You know, I thought about Urkel. getting myself a wacky neighbor for this show, but then I thought, nah, that'd be just too hilarious. Seinfeld. Yeah, he had Kramer. Family 
only matters there's Urkel. And I may be stuck from here on out. The burning shirt that he had Linny and Squeaky. Family ties. That was Skippy, I believe. Not a show I watch much. Three's Company had the... What were their names? It was Larry. I was trying to think of the landlords. Too close for comfort. was Way not go, one I remembered at all. Oh well. Anyway. And with that little revelation out of the way, it's time for me to sign off. Thank you all for joining me. Take care. I will see you back tomorrow for more. As always, I leave you with the commercials. Do you like steaks? Mm -hmm. Do you fancy yourself a conquistador? Si! Then come on down to Uncharted Steaks, the restaurant for today's modern explorer. We take only the finest steaks and hide them in the restaurant. It's your job to find these steaks and claim them in the name of taste. But beware, many dangers await you on your mission. I took a blow dart in the neck, but it was worth it for that juicy steak. An ornery king beheaded my husband, but hey, what a steak. My daughter was eaten by a lion. <laughs> I gotta tell you, that was a great steak. So come on down to Uncharted Steaks and claim some steak in El Nombre de Gusto. Here at Wackofson and Snurm, we're working for you. We understand that service is what creates customer loyalty, and we're willing to stand on our heads to keep you coming back. In fact, we'll stand on our heads, then do cartwheels. We'll juggle. We'll ride unicycles. We'll ride unicycles while twirling plates on the ends of sticks. Anything to show you that you're number one. We'll wear funny hats. We'll cover ourselves in your choice of delicious ice cream toppings and light our hair on fire. We'll hire you a band. We'll repaint your house. We'll introduce you to Mr. Robert De Niro. We'll have attractive young people of your sexual preference hand feed you grapes and fan you. Wackerson and Snurm, totally committed to serving you. Mr. Johnson's time travel elixir can take you to the future. Me? Yes, you. Really? How? Just add water and drink. Try it. Okay. <laughs> It, uh, doesn't seem to be working. Ah, but just wait a moment. Okay, now look at the clock. <gasps> oh my god, it's a miracle. I'm living two seconds in the future. This stuff really works. Mr. Johnson's time travel elixir. This stuff really works. Wait, how will I survive here in this crazy future? With my simple old-fashioned ways, I'll be killed. Hello? Mr. Smith? Yeah? About that kidney transplant you're waiting for. Uh-huh. Now you can charge it, because I've got a pre-approved credit card with your name on it. Boy, that would be great. Sign me up. Cold calling can be hard, but the Telemarket 2000 makes it easy. Simply type in a name, and the Telemarket prints out personal information about the people you're calling. Hello? Mrs. Johnson? Yeah? I know you're going through a painful divorce. Who is this? And nothing can take your mind off a lousy, cheating husband like some beautiful aluminum siding. <gasps> Telemarket 2000. Let us help you get your foot in the door before it's slammed in your face. Are you tired of Italian waiters always pushing the veal? I'll take the spaghetti. You should have tried the veal, Pazar. Spaghetti. This spaghetti. Veal. Well, worry no longer. Thanks to the new book, 1001 Excuses Not to Order the Veal. This handy restaurant companion lists over a thousand excuses to use when you don't want to order veal. Just listen. I can't eat veal because I'm from Scandinavia. I'd order the veal, but it causes my limbs to fall off. Or come dressed as a calf and try the excuse. How dare you? I'm not a cannibal. So order 1001 excuses not to order the veal and have a pleasant veal-free meal the next time you dine out. Yeah.